Federal government concludes takeover of four power distribution companies, inaugurates new electricity management board. Oil falls on concerns of economic slowdown, may then feel demand. And on commodity watch, gold hits over three-week low on strong dollar, Federal Reserve rate hike worries. This is Business Express on the network service of the NTA, and we're reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Musa Abubakar. Well, let's begin the program by telling you that the federal government alongside other stakeholders is redoubling efforts to achieve an, a safe school environment across the country where Nigeria's next generation could flourish and contribute to productive economies and societies. This was the focus of a national stakeholders engagement forum on finance and safe schools organized by the Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning. The federal government is committed to ensuring a safer teaching and learning environment while in the same vein trying to provide budgetary provisions in a bid to make our schools safe for learning. I'd like to call on all stakeholders to be part of this initiative. The future of our children lies in our hands. We need to work together collectively and ensure the future of our children is safe. When you look into a child's eyes, you see pure innocence and purity. Let's save and protect their future today, for tomorrow belongs to who prepare for it today. The new move is propelled by the increase in incidents of attacks on schools, resulting in disruption of learning activities. Now, staff of the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development have been advised to be procedural in carrying out their activities and update themselves with current ICT knowledge to be relevant in the system. Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Lami Lekan Adigbiti, gave the advice while launching the Standard Operating Procedure Manual in the Ministry. The Minister particularly appealed to Parastatos and the Ministry to implement the document in achieving targets in the mining industry. You know, do less and achieve more. That's what this would do for us. We are going e-government, all that gamut, and this will make our work to be more efficient and more productive. Because this reform is one of many that have taken place under this government. Um, transparent, the standard operating procedure also leads into uh, not just uh, efficiency, but also transparency. And it also at least um, assists in ensuring that the effectiveness of the ministry in, 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 in the ministry and all the agencies in the, in the discharge of their duties is of first class. The head of the civil service of the federation has directed that the SOPs be cascaded down to the parastatals for effective implementation of the enterprise content management solutions of FC25. It will also guide them in the implementation of laid down government policies for the development of the mining sector. 
A conversation on how to facilitate the integration of African women owned businesses in regional and international markets have been ongoing in addition to taking advantage of global value chains. What are the results so far? Joining the conversation this afternoon is Blessing Irabo uh, Oza. She is the president organization of women in in international trade. You're welcome to Business Express. Okay. So thank you so much for having me on the show this afternoon. Okay. It's, um, it's a real pleasure for me and for the women of Africa at large because of the upcoming conference. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, uh, what is it like doing business in Nigeria? Yes, there are success stories as well as challenges. Let's have your experience. Uh, for me, doing business in Nigeria, yes, it's challenging. But we still have a lot of women who have broken the ceiling, who are still doing business in spite of the harsh environment. We are still pushing, and we know with the, with the right environment, we can do more. And that is why we are so happy that the African Women Trade Conference is taking place in Nigeria this year. Okay, you, you talked about a uh, harsh environment. What do you mean by harsh environment? And how can we make this environment, you know, uh, conducive for women to thrive? Most of our policies are not gender responsive. Okay. So we are hoping that um, the government should look at um, policies that are gender responsive, policies that are gender friendly, where women are properly mainstream into the different policy that has been made, especially in the area of trade. Okay, so what do you suggest so that uh, we can make the environment much more friendly for uh, women to actually participate? Like when you look at the access to finance, it's still difficult for women in business to assess financing in this yeah. country. Okay. And um, without finance, you really cannot go anywhere. Yes, you have a lot of funds in the bank, but uh, you're still looking at um, huge collateral, high interest rates. And then the literacy part of uh, the illiteracy part of the woman itself. So we still have a whole lot uh, to put together. But that does not mean that some of the women are not doing well in terms of trade activities, and that and they are really contributing to the GDP of this country. That I can tell you. Okay, there, there's so much uh, talk about capital. Where is the place of capacity to handle capital? Um, there's the place of capacity. If you look, if you look uh, critically into women's business, SMEs are mainly made up of women, and a lot of them have capacity. We are looking at having aggregated hubs. If we can have a place like an aggregated hub funded by the government, where you have this central hub, they are being certified. It meets international standard, just like the one you have in in places like Kenya, South Africa, where you just take your products, go there and produce, and you pay. You don't need to start building your own um, factory. Until you have that capacity to build your factory, then it's fine. But when you don't have that capacity, once you have a place where you can produce, you are good and well, and you can export, and you can uh, have uh, exchange any. Even without you export, you can meet the local market. You can compete with foreign products that are coming into the country. Okay, uh, oh, oh, it's uh, international has been there since uh, 1989 with impact investment worth hundreds of millions of dollars in trade and business transactions annually. How, how much of this has the Nigerian businesswoman benefited? Um, I will tell you that a, a lot of our members are doing exploits and I will, uh, let me just mention two, one from the agro and one from uh, the garments and apparent. Okay, if you go that. online now, if you go online, you can find uh, Auckland Best. Auckland Best is one of our champions in Owit, Nigeria, and she's doing well when it comes to the agro. Another person is Blessing, um, is Blessing Achum, who is the uh, owner of Dozier Creative Hub. She has made a name and she's well known across the continent, not just in Nigeria, for her works and the brand, and she's aggregating other smaller designers into her creative hub so that they too can uh, have uh, go into the export markets. 
Okay. Uh, it is clear that there are knowledge gaps when uh, it comes to applying skills for effective trading. How can this be uh, bridged? It's, it's gone, it comes down to collaboration with the government and the private sectors. So if the government works closely with the private sector, okay. we can easily bridge the gap because there is a lot of opportunities, there is a lot of training, and the private sectors are able to identify this gap and the government to have, the, have expertise in this gap as well as the private sector is bringing everybody under the same umbrella and uh, designing a framework that will be uh, that will be assessed by everyone and there is opportunity for everyone at the end of the day okay let's talk about the upcoming conference it is uh, nigeria's turn to host africa women trade conference what are the talking points and expected actions yeah um last year with nairobi hosted the african women trade conference mm -hmm. and it was empowering women in intra-trade africa where we basically looked at the solution that has hindered women from trading amongst themselves. And one of our outcomes for last year is access to financing. I am glad to announce to you that UNECA took it up. They've done a series of studies positioning the women, uh, women in Africa for the next big opportunity in regional yeah. mm. and, in, uh, and global trade. What we hope to come out is to provide solution for those barriers that has hindered the African women from trading amongst themselves. And at the end of this um, conference, we'll be, calling, uh, we'll be having a call for action, which we know will be implemented by the member states across the African continent. Last year, we had over 30 countries in the conference. And this year, we, have, we are hoping to have over 40 countries attending the conference and for proper implementation by the regional blocks for women by the regional blocks so that it will support the women in trade especially in the area of the african continental free trade area okay you talked about african continental free trade area how position uh, is the uh, i mean association uh, towards taking advantage of the african continental free trade our women from across Africa is actually positioned to take um, the various advantage of the African continental free trade. That was the major reason why we came up with this conference, so that we can all look at it. And I can tell you that there is trade opportunity going between Nigeria and Kenya. Even Uganda now we are working on some um, areas we've identified that we can work with them properly. So is South Africa and other different African countries. Or with Nigeria as a body is even entering collaboration with the Gambia Women Chamber of Commerce to facilitate trade across the two countries. Now, thank you very much. Uh, blessing, uh, Irabo Oza. Thank you for sharing your thought with us. Thank you so much for having me on this show. The federal government has completed the takeover of four electricity distribution companies and constituted the board of the Nigeria Electricity Liability Management Company. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo said the newly constituted board of the Nigeria Electricity Liability Management Company will enhance ongoing efforts to resolve the liabilities relating to tariff shortfalls for power distribution companies nationwide. The vice president also mandated the board composed of Minister of Finance, Power and others to protect the interests of the society, particularly ordinary citizens. Now, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture has reviewed the country's policy on agricultural seeds with a view to boosting farmers' output. Musa Leo reports that the document was developed with the support of the United States Agency for International Development. The successful effort of the government towards the attainment of national food security and other goals of agricultural development depends on the performance of the seed industry that set the limit of yield response of other farm, uh, farm inputs. Such policy efforts for seed industry operate in the same policy space that governs the performance of the entire agricultural economy. Subsequently, with the enactment of the National Agricultural Council Act number 21 of 2019, the Council has introduced 
some innovations and technologies, which include the CISI Codex, the third party certification, the C Tracker. Now, a price slump on Monday has investors were concerned that aggressive U.S. interest rate hikes might weaken the global economy and fill demand while a stronger dollar also weighed. Brent crude futures for October settlement fell 27 cents to $96.45 a barrel. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures for September delivery due to expire Monday, where we're down 61 cents at $90.16 a barrel. The more active October contract was at $90.09, down 35 cents or 0.4%. On Friday, both Brent and WTI climbed for a third straight day, but fell about 1.5% on the week on a stronger dollar and demand concerns. Ago hits over three-week low on strong dollar. Federal Reserve rate hike worries. Let's take a quick look at prices of other commodities in the market. Financial services industry led activities in the week ended contributed 5.6 billion naira to NGX turnover. Aisha Busa has the details. The equities market in Nigeria depreciated by 0.59% last week, leaving the all share index at 49,370.62. And market capitalization dropped to 26.629 trillion naira. A total turnover of 823.005 million shares worth 12.228 billion in 17,482 deals were traded last week by investors on the floor of the exchange. The financial services industry led the activity chart with 561.6 million shares, valued at 5.5 billion naira, traded in 8,388 deals. The ICT industry followed, while the third place was the consumer goods industry. Trading in the top three equities, FBN Holdings, E-Transact International, and the United Bank for Africa, accounted for 323.4 million shares, worth 2.5 billion naira in 1,457 deals. 2,378 units of exchange-traded products, valued at 1.5 million naira, were traded in the week in 22 deals while 78,821 units of federal government bonds valued at 82.6 million were traded. All other indices finished lower with the exception of the NGX Premium, NGX Banking, NGX AfriBank Value and NGX Industrial Goods, which appreciated by 0.12%, while the NGX ASM closed flat. 21 equities appreciated in price during the week, 41 equities depreciated in price, while 94 equities remain unchanged. Now to NGX uh, Monday's activities. It's a negative start on the equities market as the NGX All Share Index depreciated by 49,344.67 basis point. Market capitalization dropped to 26.614 trillion naira. 122.7 million shares exchanged hands by investors in 3,915 deals valued at 1.301 billion naira. Mutual benefits insurance, Transcoop and Gary and T-Trust company led activities on the floor of the exchange. Now let's see global stocks. Helen, here's the global market review. 
This week, investors on the global stock market will be paying close attention to Eurozone flash PMIS due on Tuesday. European markets retreated on Monday as fears of more aggressive interest rate hikes from the Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank returned to the fore. DAX dipped 1.86%, FTSE 0.54%, and CAC 40 of France also depreciated 1.46%. Shares in Asia Pacific region were mostly lower as concerns over aggressive Federal Reserve hikes re emerged. But Chinese markets rose after China cut its benchmark lending rates. The Shanghai Composites was 0.61% high at 3,277.79, while the Hansing Index dipped 0.59% at 19,655.98, and the Nikkei also depreciated 0.47% across 28,794.50. U.S. stock futures fell Monday following halt in the summer rally last week as fears of aggressive interest rate hikes returned to Wall Street. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dipped 0.86%, same with the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100 at 2.01%. Now, most African markets traded red on the first trading day of the week with stocks in negative territory. That's the Global Market Review. I am Boss Sede Abel. Now, this is where we end this episode of the program. Don't forget you can access all previous episodes on YouTube. Business Express returns 9.30 on Tuesday.